Welcome back to Game Day. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Star Citizen's latest 3.18 patch, which introduced Gen 12 render optimizations and introduces persistent entity streaming, where we're going to compare 3.17 and how these new optimizations and resource intensive logic changes the performance of the latest CPUs. For those who are not familiar, Gen 12 render introduces a new line of optimizations for one of the render threads on the CPUs. It normally takes down the render thread load by 40%. As you can see here in Lorvil, we're looking at roughly 12 milliseconds of render time and it's been taken down all the way to 7 milliseconds render time. However, while this optimization was introduced, it's just for one of the render threads. The main thread, which computes all the other logic, has still not seen any optimizations. And with the introduction of persistent entity streaming, we're also seeing an increased number of entities that the CPU needs to calculate. So with this sum of changes, both with optimizations and performance resource consumption, we're going to evaluate how the net performance has changed going from patch 3.17 to patch 3.18. For our testing methodology, we are running the 13900K, the 5800X3D, and the 7900X3D fully tuned. If you want to see my previous video on how they perform on different non-tuned specs, then please check out my videos. All CPUs are equipped with the latest RTX 4090, and for the full specs, please take wow. a look in the description below. This test took a lot of time because we had to redo the Lover run, Area 18 run, and the Orison run for all the CPUs. Use. So the result took a little bit extra time. So please, if you find this kind of benchmark useful, then please subscribe and like this video. All right, let's begin with the 5800X3D. Looking at the performance between 3.17 and 3.18 in Orison, we can actually see an improvement on the 1% low. Meanwhile, the average and the average 5% highs are arguably within margin of error or a little bit regressed. Now, the reason why we're seeing a better performance on the 1% low could be due to the render thread performance improvement. However, one thing I've noticed is that the number of entities actually reduced from ranging between 150,000 and 120,000 on 3.17 all the way down to 100,000. This performance benefit on the 1% low can be a indication more on the entity improvements rather than the render thread. Meanwhile, in area 18, there was actually no changes in the number of entities versus 3.17 and 3.18. As a result, you can see that both the 1% low, the average and the average highs are virtually the same. However, looking at Lorville, we're looking at an average regression in performance of 20%, both in the 1% low and the average. Meanwhile, in the top 5% highs, we're looking at 30% performance regression. This regression in performance is due to the number of entities increasing from an average 70,000 all the way up to 85,000 number of entities. And as a result, we're seeing a regression in performance between patch 3.17 to patch 3.18 due to persistent entity streaming increasing the number of entities. So the net performance here is negative. Now that we established that both Gen 12 render and the persistent entity streaming increasing the number of entities will actually yield either a net positive or a net regression in performance, let's take a look at the other CPUs. The 7900X2D sees an actual minor improvement in Orison, and once again, it's because Orison has fewer entities. Area 18, virtually the same, no real changes there. Once again, it also sees a reduction in performance in Lorville. Looking at 13900K, we can see a higher performance improvement in Orison compared to the other 3D cache AMD CPUs. And also in Area 18, it also sees a larger performance improvement. Meanwhile, in Lorville, it's only seeing roughly 5% lower performance compared to the other CPUs that saw 10 to 30% performance regression. Now let's stack all the CPUs up against each other in Orison. And we can see that the 3900K now is effectively as fast as the 7900X3D. Looking at Area 18, we can now see that the 3900K has caught up to the 7900X3D. And finally, looking at Lorville, the 3900K is the fastest CPU compared to the 7900 X3D, which was the fastest CPU in the previous patch. And in this patch, we can see the impact of how the number of entities have completely pulled back the 5800X3D from being a very, very strong contender to literally losing over 30% of its performance. So what can we conclude about this? Looking at the overall performance in patch 3.18, there's now a new CPU king, the 13900K. Taking the performance crown in all major landing zones in different areas, we can see that the 13900K 
actually benefited more from the Gen 12 render. This was actually something that I read in the Star Citizen forums that the 3900K would actually benefit more from the Gen 12 render due to the fact the optimizations is on the CPU level rather linked to the cache. This means that the quicker 3900K at 5.8 gigahertz is benefiting wider from this performance uplift. However, keep in mind the 7900X2D is still a 6 core CPU. So, without a doubt, the 7800X2D will by far add an additional 10% performance uplift, meaning that the 7800X2D could and should be slightly edging out the 3900K as well. But as you know, for those who are following my channel for a long time, we're running the 3900K with 4100 MHz RAM speeds. There's still an opportunity to find additional performance by the silicon lottery of getting 4200 MHz and 4300 MHz stable. So what this really means is that, once again, the only thing unoptimized is your PC. So when I say the only thing that is unoptimized is your PC, this still holds true in 3.18 because as the developers find new ways to optimize their engine, they're also going to find new ways to spend those resources. So while the developers has plans to improve the main render thread, which is holding back most of the CPUs today, they're going to find new ways to spend those resources as well. So when comparing the quote-unquote optimizations, we'll also have to compare it against the previous previous patch to see if there's a net performance uplift or if there is a regression in performance. And finally, if you're finding patch to patch performance analysis is useful to see how optimizations versus resource cost has changed through these patches, then please leave a comment below, like, subscribe, do all the SEO stuff to help this reach a wider audience. And if you've been here since the beginning, I want to thank you so much in advance and look forward to see you in the next video.